Hello everybody and welcome to the NPTEL online course on microelectronics devices to circuits. Uh, till now uh, we have actually done more of devices uh, in, in, in perspective which means we have learned understood the concept of BJT, MOSFET, various operation modes of the MOSFET. We have also understood how a BJT works and how does a MOSFET work, what are the various uh, domains of its working principles. Uh, we have also seen in our previous discussions uh, how a fabrication can be done in terms of MOS devices, which means that I do have a MOS device with me and I need to fabricate it on silicon. So, what are the procedures one, one needs to follow? Our last uh, module uh, dealt with basically the principle of uh, fabrication as well as packaging, uh, so that we know that what is the final goal of the whole uh, course. So, finally, uh, we need to have a device which is basically integrable onto silicon and then can be packaged properly and then delivered as a uh, entity. Uh, with this uh, with this previous uh, about 4 to 4 and a half weeks of lecture, uh, we were able to finish therefore, the basic device concepts. Now, let me come to the circuit aspect of it and the next about uh, 8 to 9 weeks, 8 weeks or 7 to 8 weeks, we will be devoting much on circuits and understanding the circuit aspects. To do that, uh, we will be starting with today's lecture and that is basically biasing of MOS amplifier and its behavior as analog switch. So, that is the topic of uh, today's lecture, it is biasing of MOS amplifier and then a behavior as an analog switch. So, what we will be doing it uh, doing in the first module of this, uh, this course is, uh, we will be looking into the VTC of the MOS device, right. So, I have a MOS amplifier, let me let me look at the, let me look at the basic simple MOSFET and then in a simple MOSFET, let me draw for you the voltage transfer characteristic. So, VTC is basically your voltage uh, transfer characteristics. Using this, uh, we will be understanding certain things and certain uh, areas of operation of the device. Uh, after this, uh, when we know the VTC, we should actually graphically know, uh, to can do the graphical analysis of this VTC, right. So, you have a VTC available with you and you want to do a graphical analysis, uh, then we actually how to do, how to go about doing it is basically my you know, second point. The third point is, we will learn about MOS uh, amplifier and how to bias it. Now, that is pretty interesting or important. And the reason is if you remember very carefully that MOS can operate in triode region, in saturation region or in the cutoff region. In the triode region it works as a resistor, in the deep triode region it can work as a voltage variable resistor, we have already discussed with it. In the saturation region it works as a current source and in cutoff it is basically switched off. So, whenever you want to use MOS device as a switch, you just have to shift it from saturation to the cutoff and vice versa. So, just have to go from saturation to cutoff and cut out to saturation, right? That is what is switching, right? So, you, have, you, you know how to bias it. But then, if you want to use MOS device as an amplifier, we should know where the initial biasing of the device should be so that I get a linear amplification with me, which means that the, the amplification AV or the voltage amplification, voltage by voltage, is not a function of the input voltage. So, even if I vary my input voltage drastically, my gain should remain constant and should be very high, right. So, you should know therefore, how do you bias your amplifier and that is the reason this thir second third one is, is an important one, right. We will be therefore, looking at the small signal models, circuit models for NMOS and PMOS. Uh, obviously, the reason asked is why will you require it? Well, we require it because finally, we have to use this MOS device in a circuit environment and therefore, uh, if we are able to predict how does the circuit behave, uh, then or, or, or if we can predict how does a MOS device behave, we can just take its equivalent model and place it in place it in those places where MOSFETs have been there. This makes our calculation and understanding very easy from sur sur circuit pers perspective. That is the reason we generally do a small signal modeling here, right. Uh, we again therefore, look at small signal model with body bias and this I will come to this later on as we discussed that body bias is an important point and then we finally, end our module by explaining how MOS works as an analog switch, right and we will see how it works as an analog switch overall. I will just give you a brief insight into the voltage transfer characteristics of MOS amplifier. Now, if you look very carefully, this is also known as a common source configuration. If you look in front of you, it is basically a common source configuration also known as grounded source configuration, right. 
grounded source configuration and the reason being your source is basically grounded right. So, source voltage is always held at equals to 0. So, whatever gate voltage you give here is actually equals to gate to source voltage. So, your gate voltage V g in this case is always equals to V g s fine right? so that is that is you should be very careful about this point. I, I again want to restress one important point which you should be always careful to be handled about uh, notation. Notation is that if it is capital V g s we have right you can have you can have uh, uh, small you can have small sorry so you can have small V g s right. So, capital V g s is basically the meaning of D c bias. D c bias primarily means that, that you have given a fixed value of gate voltage or gate voltage with respect to source voltage and it is basically a DC and therefore, it is defined like this. V g s is basically your AC bias right which means that or AC signal which means that it is a time varying uh, signal. So, this is basically a time varying signal which you see t time varying right varying signal which you see. So, you should be able to distinguish between capital V g s and small V g s and what does it stand for right at this stage. Now, if you look at carefully at this graph or uh, this profile, you will see I can simply write down for this case that V d d equals to I d R d I d R d right plus uh, gate to source right or sorry drain to V d s so equals to V d s drain to source voltage fine. Now, <coughs> which means that if your if your I d equals to 0 right i d equals to 0 then v d s is approximately equals to v d d right. And when your i d is not 0 or i d is typically a large value or v d s equals to 0 let me just tell you that you have you have uh, v d s equals to 0 which means that uh, your v d s is equals to 0 just a minute. So, your v d s equals to 0 implies that your uh, I d will be equals to uh, V d d by R d fine. If you therefore, uh, see very carefully that under the condition that your drain current is 0 and your device is cut off the output voltage will be dragged to V d s. So, V as you can see here V o is equals to V d s right. And similarly, when your so when your input when your drain to source voltage equals to V d s your I d equals to 0 cut off and whenever my drain to source voltage is 0 I have a finite value of I d flowing into it and that is what is uh, what is what is with, what is with me. Now, understand so now understand that if I plot V d s which is drain to source voltage versus V g s right which is the input voltage. So, this is my output voltage and this is my input voltage right. So, I have an input voltage which is V g s and I have output voltage which is V d s. Now, when my V g s is below threshold voltage of the device so, when my V g s is below threshold voltage of the device my device is as I discussed earlier is in cut off mode right. It cut off means this is cut off. So, there is no current flowing through you I d equals to I d equals to 0 and, and as you can see V d s equals to V d d see V d s equals to V d d. So, this V d s is equals to V d d fine till a point you reach A at A your MOS device turns on because you are at this point at node A. I, I get that V g s is just greater than equals to V t h threshold voltage of the device and as is as a result the device switches on and a current starts to flow I d starts to flow, but I d is initially low and then increases when it is initially low then uh, if you can if you if you can find out uh, v from this equation from this equation if you find out V d s therefore, will be equals to V d d minus I d R d. So, when R d I d is low this quantity is small and therefore, V d s is almost close to V d s which is this region. As I d starts to increase this quantity becomes larger and larger and therefore, V d minus that quantity starts to fall down and this is what is happening you are falling down. So, the current voltage output voltage is falling down till you reach point B right. Point B is the point where uh, you you reach to a point where your 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 this V d s drain to source voltage V out has actually fallen so low that you have driven this almost into the edge of the triad region fine. So, you remember uh, that if V d s was high right you were into saturation re, uh, if and your V g s was larger than. So, the condition for saturation was that V g s 
should be greater than equals to sorry I am sorry V D S should be greater than equals to V G S minus V T H this is one condition and that is the reason V D S should be quite large because this is quite large and therefore V D S should be quite large. So, if V D S falls below a particular limit which is happening here right and the output voltage is falling below a particular limit you enter into triode region and that is the reason you see this is triode region. In the triode region the current is a non-linear function of the input voltage and you see as the current increases the voltage further rises till you reach point C and at point C the VDS is so small that there is no current flow and therefore your voltage transfer characteristic stops at this particular point. So, we have therefore understood uh, the VTC of a MOS amplifier is divided into three parts one is the cutoff, another is saturation and another is the triode region right. So, if you want to use it as a switch you need to move from cutoff to saturation and from saturation to cutoff very fast right. If you want to use it for example, if you are biasing hair or hair which is means at the cutoff or triad region then you can safely see or you can actually see that if you if you are biasing somewhere here let us suppose right and you try to find out uh, output del V out right and del V in which is basically my voltage gain right peak to peak. Then you will see that even if I shift my input voltage by some amount my output voltage still remains fixed which means that A V is equals to 0 because del V out is 0 which means that as you go on shifting your input voltage your output voltage does not change and your voltage gain fixed to 0 same thing will happen somewhere here where it is almost flat right. So, where the gain will be there gain will be there in the saturation region where V out is drastically varying even for a small change of V in. So, even if your V in has changed from this point say to, to say to this point because of heavy non-linearity the output has actually changed from. So, if this is your input x and output y then this will be x o y o and therefore, we can define the gain to be equals to x o minus y o divided by y minus x or x minus y. So, so it will be x minus y actually, but what we do is we write something like this we write this to be as x minus y we write to be as x minus y. Now, so therefore, this will be negative in dimension because x is sm uh, smaller than y and therefore, this gain a v will be actually a negative quantity, but will be a negative quantity, but will be a large quantity. So, more steep is this slope more will be the drain current uh, more will be the set. So, ideally the V T C looks like this ideal right this is actually equals to V D D here and this is also equals to V D D here this is V G S this is V D S right and if you bias your device somewhere here I should ideally get A V to be equals to infinity right voltage gain to be equal to infinite at this point the output will be latch to 1 at this point it is latch to 0. So, it is almost working as a digital switch right. So, by application of external bias I am able to switch it off from this side to this side right. So, with this let me careful come to you how do I do it by graphical method. See as I discuss I was discussing with you that if you plot I D versus V D S right I will get one point in I D axis which is equals to V D S V D D by so, so if I as I was discussing with you V D D if you go back to your previous slides you will so you will if you go back to your previous slide V D D will be equals to I D R D right plus V D S right. So, what I can write down is safely is that V D S equals to V D D minus I D R D. Now, when in this case so if you if you look at the x axis it is I D which means that V D V D S equals to 0 V D 0 means I D will be equals to V uh, V D D by I D. So, this point is basically your V D D by sorry R D R D that will be this point and what about this point this is the point where your I D equals to 0. So, when I D equals to 0 this quantity equals to 0 and therefore, V D S equals to V D D. So, this is there that is the reason this is V D D fine. So, I have a I have a line which connects which connects to one point on the y axis as V D D by R D to another point in the y axis which is basically equals to V D D fine and therefore, if you if you if you drop this line the slope of this line is given. So, if you if you actually plot this line from this equation I get I D equals to V D D by R D minus 1 V D S by R D right V D D is the DC bias and V D S is the applied 
uh, variable bias. So, as you can see uh, the slope of this curve is equals to minus 1 by R d. So, higher the value of R d more is the um, uh, less is the slope available to you. So, if you make your R d large uh, uh, if you make your R d large then what happens is that this quantity will drop down and th this will not change because this is the dv dd and therefore, if you increase your R d it shifts to this. This is with increasing R d R d increases right. Whereas, if you would have increased V d d then this would have shifted to this point and this would also have shifted by the same amount to this point and therefore, I will get set of parallel lines right set of parallel lines when I increase V d d. So, let us suppose your V d d was say 1 volt here then 2 volt 3 volt so on and so forth. So, this will be 1 this will be 2 this will be 3 and this divided by R d will so say say, say your so, 1 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm will give you the value of 1 milliamp right. So, this will be 1 milliamp 1 milliamp similarly this will be so 1 1 so this is 1 this is 2 2 by 1 will be 2 milliamp and this will be 3 milliamp right and so on and so forth. So, these are known as the load line. So, so understand this issue so, this is actually known as the load line right and the reason of the load line is that they exactly follow the issue that uh, the, the inverse of that is basically the slope in for inverse of the load is basically the slope right and higher that value uh, lower is the slope which is available with you. Now, with this knowledge uh, what we can therefore, write down is that we learn two things out of it. The first thing is basically the first thing is basically uh, that your you do have always uh, the current which is flowing through a device uh, will depend upon many factors, but primarily upon external circuit factors. The second idea was that uh, always there will be a load line whose slope will be equals to minus 1 by R d and very wherever it cuts your I v characteristics of the device which is this 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 are the points where. So, these are the points A B A Q B C. So, A Q B C are the points where uh, the where uh, device characteristics right and circuit they exactly match right exactly match why because this is the device part this is the device this is device this is device this is device whereas this is basically a circuit so when it cuts both of them are the points where both devices and circuits uh, properly give you a matched current available with you right and therefore these are effectively known as the uh, point uh, known as the points of operation of the device out of which we take one point uh, which is also referred to as q point or the quiescent point q q point is known as quiescent q i s c e n t quiescent point primarily meaning that this point is very very uh, insensitive to, uh, so so even if your voltage is varying slightly the q point will be varying but the output will be very stable in the output side right and this is where, where it cuts almost in the middle of the saturation region. So, this is the saturation region right and this is the middle of saturation region you will find the cube by this is your triode region when your V d s is very very small right. So, that is what was was discussing here that in the bulk side you will have a low value and as you increase it this is the. So, this is basically your V g s which is equals to V g s minus V t h also known as overdrive right. With this knowledge um, uh, we, we come to important point that uh, that I always uh, always want a linear amplification primarily meaning that uh, my gain should be almost independent of the input voltage and should be fixed for a given value of a range of input voltage right. So, so you see here that uh, so you can see here from this basic uh, basic operation principle that you have this region available with you. So, I have a V d s and V g s the threshold voltage V t and so on and so forth right. Let me now explain to you that uh, given a VTC right given a VTC how can we therefore, draw the output characteristics of the device and what will be the fundamental characteristics of the device. So, let me just draw for you right and this is your uh, this is your point this is the point this is right this is your your cutoff this is your saturation and this is your triode region and this is V g s 
and this is your V D S also referred to as V out. Right? So, let us at each point uh, or at, at each section of our voltage transfer characteristics, let us see if we can evaluate the, the, the ID, IDVD characteristics right? and then try to find out the voltage gain available here. So, with this knowledge let me first start with the saturation region of operation which is this one and let us see how a current is formed there or a current is formed in the saturation region of operation. right? So, what we do here is we, we take up this case and then we draw a profile here right? and we say that it is like A, B and then something like this. So, we refer to this as point B, this is point C, this is point A and let us suppose this is point Q which is the Q send point right? and we mark it as this and then this. Again of course, as I discussed with you saturation, cut off and this is your triad region. And the behavior of current is totally different in all these three regions. In cutoff region current is 0, in triad region is strong function of VGS, in saturation it is almost uh, linear function of VGS. If in this region, uh, at in region A, Q, B let us suppose, right? I will get V in input voltage should be greater than equals to threshold voltage of the device. We have already discussed this point and V out is greater than equals to V in minus V T H. Remember why? Because V out is equals to V D S, right? V out equals to V D S and V D S should be greater than equals to V G S minus V T H for saturation, right? And therefore, I get V out to be greater than equals to V in minus V G. Now, since V S equals to 0, right? Therefore, V G S equals to V S and therefore, your equals to V in, right? and this is a V input voltage which you see is almost equals to the source voltage in general. right? Now, the second is that output, so output is given as V in minus V in minus V T H. With this knowledge, we can safely write down I D which is the drain current to be equals to mu n C oxide right? W by A L into V in minus V T H whole square, which therefore again means that V, so the V O will be equals to V D D minus I d R d minus I d R d and therefore, if you place this value of I d back into this equation, I will get V 0 equals to V d d minus I d is uh, mu n C oxide W by L right multiplied by V in minus V t h whole square into R d right and this is what you get. Now, if you if you therefore, see uh, this is your V 0, right? V 0. So, I need to find out uh, therefore, A V as del of V 0 to del of V in, right? and V in is equals to V i q. This comes out to be minus R d mu n C oxide right? w by L into V into V i q minus V T H. This is the gain in the saturation region. Fine. So, let me again recapitulate what we did. I am assuming that the device is fully into saturation right? and there, there is no C L M and therefore, I can write down I D to be equals to mu n C oxide W by L into V in minus V T H whole square and V out will be equals to V D D minus I D R D. We also saw that in saturation that uh, V D S or V out should be greater than equals to V G S minus V T H. Therefore, putting into everything into this, uh, putting the value of I D into this equation here, I get this into consideration. Then if you find the differential of V out to V in which is basically the voltage gain, I get this consideration and therefore, I will just give you an idea that R D into this is known as transconductance G M. This whole thing is known as G M also referred to as transconductance of the device. Transconductance primarily means G M basically means del I D and del V G S, which means that how fast is your drain current changing with respect to a similar change in the value of gate to source voltage, right? which means that how, how much your device is sensitive to input gate voltages. Right? If G M is higher, the transconductance of the device is high, I would expect to see a large change in the output current, whereas for the same change in the value of V G S. Whereas, if the transconductance is low, I will get a drain current which is actually smaller uh, uh, with same change in the value of V G S. Right? 
So, please understand therefore, the gain. But one point to be noted at this stage is that gain at which point only at V i q or i i q i q or V i q which means that if you go back to your previous slide which, which means that that I have set my q point sorry I am set my I have set my q point to be q. If you shift your q point somewhere here or here very edge to the very edge to the triode region or very edge to the saturation region right. Then even if there is a small change in the so, so you see you placed it here right you placed it here. Now, you do a small change in V i then this will either shift back into A or it will come this side. If it comes this side you will have heavy nonlinearity as I discussed with you and if it goes this side then it will go to cut off fine and both ways I do not want it and they have similarly if I place it here and I allow it to subtract then most of it will go to triad region. So, what people thought was let us put a q value which is somewhere in the middle of the two and help both of them right and that was the reason why this all sorts of uh, uh, variations came into picture here. Uh, but the uh, but I wanted to stress again here, here one important point is that just as you saw in the previous case try to keep your try to keep your um, try to keep your q point very in the middle of the saturation region rather than at the edge here or at the edge here right and that makes sense also right. So, okay. so we have understood the saturation region and we have understood the voltage gain. Another formula for voltage gain is basically is given by this formula that uh, A V equals to minus times 2 V R D divided by V overlap. V R D is the voltage drop across the resistor R uh, which is there on the drain side. So, V R D divided by V overlap is basically the voltage uh, V G S minus V T H is basically my voltage overlap. Right, and that is quite interesting uh, phenomena which we get. So, I am not deriving in that part, you can do it yourself, but that is typically what we are trying to do it right. With this idea understood and uh, we have understood therefore, in this lecture the basic concept of an amplifier, how does an amplifier work, uh, where do you want to bias the amplifier so that it works you in a proper manner and does not give you a distortion. Uh, we also looked into the fact that given a MOS device and cutoff region. Uh, saturation region and the triode region uh, exactly at which point should you bias your device. So, that I get the best available linear amplification available to me as I discussed with you if you keep your q point very close to either the cutoff region or the triode region chances are that by application of an input voltage the q point may actually shift into cutoff or into saturation region or triode region and as a result you will get a nonlinear output. So, it is always advisable to keep your input signal in a small signal mode and therefore, the peak to peak of your input signal should be as small as possible. Then I will be able to maintain linearity into the system which I will just show you that which means if you biased it here and then if you move from this place to this place is almost linear. But if you biased it here and then apply this very strong input voltage then it goes somewhere here and then it again comes back here to here and so on and so forth right. So, if you see very carefully uh, you will find that these these are the areas where you will have uh, excessive nonlinearity into coming into picture, but there will be surely a large gain available with you at this point and this point. Uh, we have also understood the basic functionality uh, what are the reasons re regions of operation for a MOS device. In our next class or our next module we will be actually following the triode region as well as the various biasing schemes in a MOSFET right. With this let me thank you for your patient hearing thanks a lot.